Luke chapter 11, verse 5, he said, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, let me lend me three loaves? For a friend of mine is in his journey, he's come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer thee, and say, Show me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. Yes, sir. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened yeah. unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that yeah. knocketh, it shall be opened unto yeah. you. Yeah. It shall be opened. Yeah. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will you give him a stone? Or if you ask a fish, will yeah. for a fish give him a serpent? Or if you ask for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts yeah. unto your children, how much more shall your oh, heavenly yeah. Father give the Holy yes, Spirit to them that right. ask for it? Yes, and uh, when I was reading that today, the one passage popped in my, uh, not one passage, a song popped in my head. An old hymn that said, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, yes, amen. You know, and, and reading that passage, the friend, you know, it said, though he, he was not going to give up, give, get up out of bed and give you the bread because you were his friend. That wasn't the reason. It's because you kept going. Yes, he said, I'm not going to give up. Yes, I need amen. the bread. And that's why it's because of the importunity. Yes. And it says, if you ask, you shall receive. And if you seek, you shall find. If, it, if you knock, it will be opened unto you. Yes, amen. Yes. And if Good, if evil fathers on the earth know how to give good gifts, so much more the heavenly Father knows how to give yes. good gifts. I'm, Thank you, Lord. I'm pretty positive that if we ask, not once, maybe not even twice, we just have to keep coming to the throne. Yes. We have to keep coming to the throne. The, that song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to him in prayer. Yes. Amen. Yes. And that is the secret Jesus. to success as a Christian. Yes. Is not, you know, just um, name it, claim it. No. Right. That's not going to get us very far. Yes, sir. We've got to go to the throne room right. again Amen. and again oh, and again. Right. When it looks like he's not going to get out of bed. Sometimes we feel like God's sleeping on us. we got to keep going. we, we got to say, God, I, I, know, I know, you know, I, I, I understand, but... But God, this is this is a need. Yes. Oh, well, I understand. I understand. But 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 God, I'm coming again one more time yes. to ask. Yes. And it says, if we will ask, it shall be given. And if we seek, we shall find. Yes. And if we knock, it shall be opened yes. unto us. Yes. Let's keep seeking. Let's keep asking. Right. Let's Amen. keep knocking. Yes. Because as Christians, that is the only way to have true success is on our knees, as Pastor said this morning, right. in prayer. All right, well, Sister Hannah, if you'll come, face in some singing. Worship the Lord tonight. Amen. Page 318.
Yes, amen. I don't have any more desire.
give back what, to God what is his. Yes. Yes. Father, heaven is we thank you for the opportunity to give. And to give that good enough to the kingdom of God, we pray this in Jesus' precious name. And we give with a cheerful heart. Let me pray this tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> You guys know this song, just sing it. Sing it, day star. Shine down on me. And uh, the verse, the first verse says, Build me up the valley, let your sweet aroma fill my life. Amen. Rose of Sharon, show me how to grow in beauty in God's sight. Fair step 10,000, make me a reflection of your light. Day star, shine down on me, let your love shine through me. Oh, yeah. In the night. And as Christians, we are a reflection. What the moon does to the sun, as Christians, we are to the sun of God. Yes. We are just reflecting the light from the sun. Yes. That's Amen. all we are. And, and my prayer is that wherever we go, whatever we do, that we reflect the light of the sun. Because it's a dark world that we're living in. People all around us in, in despair and, and all kinds of mess and darkness. And they need the light of God. So if you guys know this song, just sing it with me and, and worship.
Lord, I see a world that's dying, rooted by the master of the sea.
God tonight. Amen. Grateful to have this privilege of bringing the word, which we know is uh, it's nothing small, neither is it a small privilege, nor is it a small task. And anybody that stands in this altar is uh, tasked with bringing the truth and nothing but the truth. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So every time that we must bring something that's uh, with trembling, it's uh, with uh, the desire to always be a blessing, but always be truthful, yes. and just do really what God wants us to do, amen? If we follow God's word, if we follow God's lead, we'll never lead us free, amen? Yes. We'll never, we'll never lead us free. certain man at Lystra, impotent at his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up, stand up right on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voice, saying in the speech of the Lyconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they right. called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before the city, brought oxen and garlands into the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you. Right. I preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. Yes. Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good, and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained the, they the people, and they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Amen. I appreciate it, brother. Um, I'm going to be preaching if God will hold me this small message with the title, Persuaded or Persuadable? Amen. With a question mark at the end. Persuaded. Or persuadable, and I guess the more straightforward version would be: Are you persuaded, or are you persuadable? Amen. Yes, Pastor sir. Jordan will lead us in a word of prayer. Amen. Father, we love you tonight, and we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit, Lord. We thank you, God, for the desire and the heartbeat of each one of us to hear you, and and God to 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 be touched by you tonight. God, we know that there's many changes needed in each of our hearts and lives. Amen. God, we need physical touch. We need spiritual touch, mental touch. But God, we need you, God, to accomplish it. your will to us tonight. Touch Brother Amazon. Lord, minister to Brother Daniel. Let your will be done in his life. Use him tonight and give us ears to hear what would glorify you and touch every phase of it. The story of Paul is a story that brings brings joy to our hearts. Amen. Somebody that at one point, amen, he knew the word of God. He knew the scriptures that were at the time uh, available. You know, the, the first were five Bibles of uh, five books of the Bible, amen. He knew the law, he was well versed in the law, amen. But instead of using that knowledge to spread uh, the message of Jesus, the gospel later on, amen, he used that knowledge to instead persecute the church of the time. Amen. He used that knowledge to persecute those people that were preaching a gospel different 
from what he was accustomed to hearing, different from what the Jews were preaching, and different from what was accepted at the time, amen? The, the early church, they were preaching a message of salvation, not based on works, not based on the law, not based on following the Ten Commandments, but on following the teachings of Jesus, amen, and being covered under his blood, amen, and seeking and looking after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, amen. So they were preaching something that to the people at the time, and even the Jews at the time, it was revolutionary, right. and to many of them, it was actually heresy. It was something that was not acceptable, and it was blasphemy to God, amen. But we see that Paul, he needed a special touch from God, amen. He needed to hear from God directly, and once he did, Paul didn't, hinder, Paul didn't uh, hesitate, amen? Right. Once he heard from Jesus himself, once once the angel, you know, in, in the way to Damascus ran into him, or he ran into the angel and said, Paul, why are you, why are you chasing me? You're, you're following after me, you know, you're, you want to go and persecute my people, but I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, amen? And he said, now go ahead and go into the city, but if you were to go and persecute them, you're actually going to go in there and you're going to, uh, be healed first off, and then you're going to go and do the work that I have for you, and you're going to see how much it is needed to suffer, amen, for the cause of Christ. Yes, so Paul amen. went from being somebody that was persecuting Christians, yeah. you know, going door to door, taking people out of their houses probably, bringing them probably to death, amen. Yeah. He was persecuting them with such a fervor uh, that his name was known to the yes. Christians at the time, That's and right. not for a good reason. Yeah. But with that same zeal, with that same fervor, once he was converted, the Bible yeah. said that he also translated that into his missionary work, amen? Yes. And God yeah. began to use him greatly to spread the message of the gospel, yeah. to spread the message of, the message of salvation. Yes. And it wasn't yeah. long after that Paul did, in fact, begin to see and realize what it was like to suffer, yeah. amen, for the cause amen. of Christ, amen? After... He began his missionary work. After he converted, amen, he was an ardent preacher of the word of God, amen, of the gospel of Jesus, amen. And we see that he didn't, he didn't stay in one city. He didn't stay in Jerusalem. He didn't stay, amen, not even in Judea. He went and he traveled, whether it was by boat, whether it was yeah. by walking, whether maybe he used, a, you know, a horseback. I don't know. But he traveled from one place, from one place to another, Amen. To places that had not heard the gospel, had not heard of Jesus, amen, and had not heard of the message of salvation. Yes. Now we see that with, along with other apostles, God used many methods, amen, to testify of himself. Yeah. Whether it was through preaching or whether it was through miracles, amen. God always had a way to testify, amen, and show the people this is the way, amen, this is the truth, amen. It wasn't just empty right. words. It was uh, words backed up by actions. It was backed up by, uh, amen, testimony that people may be able to see and realize, okay, there, you know, there, a lot of people are telling us different things, but this is different, amen, either because they yes. saw a miracle or because they saw that God was behind the man that was speaking to them, amen. And so at a point in his missionary work, in his first missionary uh, journey, Paul came to the city of Lystra, amen? Yes. And again, if I mispronounce anything, just cut me a little bit of sweat, amen? And the first thing that we see about the people of Lystra is that they were people that were very heavy into idolatry, right. amen? They were heavy into idolatry. The Bible says this, and it shows us that they had their own deities. They had their own gods, Jupiter, amen, and Mercurius, Mercurius. amen? They had their own deities. They had their own uh, ideas, they had their own gods, and so whenever the word of God came to them, they said, oh, you know what, these, these are our deities, amen, these mm -hmm. are our deities. So there were people that were far from God, there were people that were far, amen, from Jesus, the knowledge thereof, and yeah. they had their own mentality, they had, but even in that, it's, it's amazing to know that even they knew that there was some kind, amen, some kind of order, there was some kind of, amen, sovereign creator of the world, amen, there was some, there was something to it, amen, us humans, we were under some sort of uh, deity, and so they, yes. they, they thought, you know what, we'll make our own, amen, like many other Greek cities, and the Bible says that when Paul came to them, he came to them preaching, amen, he came to them with, amen, the, the intention of preaching, amen, but the first contact that we see of him speaking of God, amen, it's not Going, it's not him going into uh, a temple. It's not him going to a big crowd right. and you know preaching uh, a fire and brimstone word of God. It's right. him coming to a man, amen, 
him coming to a man that when he was speaking, when he was spreading the message of the gospel, that man heard what he was saying, amen, but that man had a disability. That man right. was not able to walk. That man had a problem in his body, but the Bible says that this man heard Paul, and, and Paul saw this man, amen, and Paul said, he has faith. Paul said, he is listening to what I'm saying. He has faith. He can be healed. God can use this for his right. glory, amen. And so what Paul does is, amen, it's daring. It's daring because a lot of people without faith would say, well, what if I say, hey, be healed, and he's not healed. What am I going to yeah. do? I'm going to look right. 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 bad in front of the people, amen. But Paul said, in the name of God, amen, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Yes. Just what Peter had done some chapters back, amen, in the book of Acts. He said, be healed, and the Bible says that that man immediately, he sprung up on his feet, he yes, began sir. to walk, amen, he was able to, to, to do that thing that he could not do before, yes. and the Bible says that this deed, in, this deed in fact, amen, served for the glory of God. Why? Amen. Because the people of that time, the people of that city, they saw that, yes. amen, and they saw and said, wow. This Paul, this Paul guy, he, he has word, but he doesn't have word only. He has actions, yes. and there's somebody backing him up, amen. That's this right. is the real deal, hallelujah. And so the people saw that, amen. The right. people saw that Paul had seemingly done something, something miraculous by himself, and they said, they said, this man is, this man is a deity. Amen. He saw, they saw the miracle and they said, this man is a God in the likeness of man. Amen. Yes, this sir. God, this, this guy is a, a God in the likeness of men. Yeah. Amen. So, so oh, to start off, we see that at the beginning, amen, of this scripture, the people of Lystra, they believed that Paul, amen, and Barnabas were deities. Yeah. Right. Amen. They were convinced. They were, they were persuaded right. that they were deities. Amen. They, they probably were rejoicing and saying that our deities are visiting us and they're going to do great works in our city. They're going to do right. great works in our people. Uh, yeah. But the Bible says that immediately they began, amen, to try to sacrifice them. Right. They began to try to glorify them. They began to try to worship them, amen. What do we see in this? That they were convinced. Right. Amen. They were convinced. They were persuaded. They were. They were. They were founded in their in what they saw. Right. They believed what they saw. They believed that they were the deities that they worshipped all this time. That's Amen. Right. They try to worship them. The Bible says that even the priest of Jupiter, he he brought animals and he brought things to you know bring them glory with. Right. And so they were convinced. They were. Yeah. They were sure of what they were seeing. Amen. But Paul, when he saw this, he began to say, Hey, 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 hey! I, I'm no god. Right. I'm, not, I'm not a deity. Amen. And, and, and I find this so beautiful because what Paul began to preach to them is, I'm not a deity. I'm a man just like you. Right. Amen. Right. I'm a man just like you are. The only difference is that I've been sent by God to preach Ooh. to you. Right. And what Paul yes. began to say to them is that just like I'm a man just like you, right. and I'm preaching just like you, you too can be saved. Amen. Yes, sir. So yes, Paul's will. message is... He was, instead of bringing glory to himself, he was like, hey, I, I know you saw what God was able to do through me, but it's not through me, man. It's God. Uh, yeah. I'm just sent by God and accept this message, and you too can follow me. Yeah. You too can yeah. come to Christ. You too can come to know the gospel, amen. And so the Bible says that Paul, you know, did this over and over again. And he, he, he stressed to them, do not worship me. I'm, I'm nobody. I'm just a man, just like you are. We're the right. same. I'm, I'm a man, you're a man, but you too can come to the knowledge of Christ. Amen. And if that's yes. not the gospel, then I don't know what is, right? Amen. Yes. Tell you, a person, I'm, I was somebody just like you were, amen. I was in my sinful ways, but what God did with me, He can do with you, amen. Yes. Hallelujah. And we believe that this is true. Just like God was able to save us, amen, from our pathway to hell, He can yes. save yes, people that are in the world right now from that same path, amen. Hallelujah. So, the Bible says that after so much, you know, arguing after Paul telling them over again, I'm not God, but there is a God, amen, up in heaven, and I'm preaching him to you. The Bible says that the people, they received that message because they, they stopped trying to worship him. They stopped trying to sacrifice him. You know, they stopped trying to worship Paul as a deity, amen, and I believe that they came to the knowledge like, hey, I mean, we saw the miracle that he was able to do, and if it wasn't by himself, if it was by the power of God, this guy must be real. Amen. We've right. been worshiping fake deities for all this time. They've been able to do nothing for us. But here's a man that's preaching God, that's preaching Jehovah, that's preaching Jesus. Yeah. And he came and he was able to heal a man yeah. that could not walk. Yeah. Amen. For maybe from birth. Yeah. Amen. And so the people went from being convinced in their deities to being persuaded. Amen. 
that there was a God up in heaven. Yes, Amen? sir. Now, the Bible says that I believe, you know, news and the words, you know, spreads quickly. Right. And the Bible says that there were some Jews in Antioch that heard of what was happening. Now, I don't know if they heard of the re of the reverence that the people of Lystra were giving to Paul. I don't know if they heard that the people of Lystra were turning to God. I don't know if they heard that Paul had arrived to Lystra. Amen. But they heard what was going on. Right. And they said, hey, we got to put a stop to this. Right. Amen. They said, we have got to put a stop to this. Yeah. Amen. So the Bible says that they took up on that journey. I don't know if it was walking. I don't know if it was, if it was by boat. But they went on that journey for, from Antioch to Lystra, where Paul was preaching, amen, preaching the gospel. And I find this interesting, because their sole purpose was to stop somebody from preaching the true gospel of Jesus, yes, sir. amen. And Lystra was not, you know, five oh. minutes away from Antioch. Lystra was not ten minutes away from Antioch. Right. Neither did they have cars or planes to get there quickly. No, sir. They had to go on a journey that, actually, you can look this up if you have the one of those Bibles that have a map, that have maps at the end of it, amen. One of them shows the distance from Lystra to Antioch, and if the scale is accurate, it's roughly around 300 miles, oh, yeah. amen. Just under 300 miles. And uh, doing a little bit of research, a day's journey in that in that time, you know, of the Roman uh, reign, 20 miles was roughly a day's journey. So it took them a long time to get from Antioch to Lystra, amen. But it didn't matter to them. It didn't matter that they had to travel a long time. It didn't matter that they had to uh, maybe face a lot of uh, incomfort, you know, uh, uncomfortable scenarios. Right. Maybe they yeah. had to, uh, you know, they had to do things that they we wouldn't want to do. Maybe, right. you know, who would want to travel three hundred, just under three hundred miles, just to go to some city? Right. Amen? But they were determined in their uh, mission to stop the work of Paul. Yes, God. sir. So they took up on that journey. They traveled, mm -hmm. amen. It took them time to get there, amen. And during this time, I believe those people were probably still hearing the message of God. They were probably still hearing the message that Paul had for them. And so their faith was probably growing and growing, and they yes. were becoming firm, and they, they might have been establishing churches by then, right. amen. But once those men arrived, the Bible says that they began to speak ill of Paul. They began to sabotage his word. They began to speak against the gospel. Right. And they likely even accused him of, oh, you guys saw miracles? You guys saw, you guys saw that he was able to do this? Oh, well, you know what? He was able to do that because uh, because the principalities of, of the devil were allowed him to do it. Right. And then they probably accused, just like they did in Jesus' yeah. time, yeah. you know, when Jesus was casting right. the demons, that they came and said, oh, he was able to do that because of... Uh, Belzebub, amen? Right. So they probably came and did the same to them. They began to say, oh, you say you saw signs? Well, he was able to do that because of dark magic, because of other powers. Right. That's not right. God. That's not God. Right. God is what we have. You know, it's the Ten Commandments. It's, uh, you know, sacrifices. This Jesus guy, don't accept him. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Paul's been telling y'all, but right. he's been calling y'all this yeah. whole time. Amen? And what's sad about the situation is that even though Paul had fervently been preaching there. He had healed a man, probably had healed more since then, amen, and the people had believed in the message that he had for them. They went from believing in their own deities okay. to believing that Paul was a man of God and believing in God himself. Once these Jews came and they began to sabotage the work of Paul, okay. the Bible says that they took in that message and they said, oh, well in that case, let's get rid of Paul, yeah. amen. And the Bible says that they believed and they were reconvinced. Amen. They were convinced once right. again. Oh, and oh, listening God. to the false teachers, listening to these Jews, they took Paul. Amen. They didn't just take him out of the city. They didn't just say, hey, Paul, we appreciate your time. Uh, we'll, we'll look into it and uh, we'll let you know what we, what we think about the two opinions. No, it says that they took Paul. They stoned him. They didn't stone him just, you know, to hurt him. They thought he died. Yeah. Right. They thought they had killed him. They thought they had done away with somebody that they were not convinced that he was a false teacher. Amen. And they took him out of the city and they left him for dead. Right. Amen. What does this show us? The people of Lystra went from believing in their deities, Jupiter and Mercurius, to being convinced Amen. That there was a God up in heaven and that Paul was giving them the, the true right. gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But when false teachers came to them, they were quick 
to be convinced, to be persuaded. Amen. The Bible uses that word that the Jews persuaded them into believing that Paul had been lying to them this whole time. And they went from believing Paul to believing what they had said. And therefore, that worship to God, that worship to the true and living God, right. went from worship to hatred oh, yes, sir. Yes. Paul. God help us. What do we see in this, amen? And what, what, is, what is it that I'm trying to tell you? What is it that I'm trying to get at? And what is it that I want us to see and understand today? The people there at the time, they were quick to be convinced. Mm -hmm. They were quick to be persuaded about one thing, and they were quick to be persuaded about another thing. Amen. They were quick to hear what somebody had to say, and then they were quick to believe it, and then hear what somebody else had to say, and believe that right afterwards. Right. Amen. Even if the two ideas completely contradicted each other, amen. Even if they had seen signs, even if they had seen evidence of the power of God, even if they had seen that somebody had come from a faraway land with the sole purpose of showing them the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen. When somebody else came just to sabotage that work, they said, okay. Well, that sounds about right. Let's get rid of Paul. Amen. So they were quick to go from one idea into another. Amen. And what can we learn from this? And why is this so important for us today? Amen. The reason is because today, many false teachers right. are going around right. and tearing down the word that true Christians and that true preachers of the gospel are trying to do in the name of God. Amen. Yes, they're yes. trying to tear down the true gospel. They're yes, trying sir. to do, uh, amen, away with what, the, with what scripture says. Amen. They're trying to transform the gospel and the Bible into yeah. something that is not so. Amen. And the sad part about it is that people, even people that believe, amen, the, the sanctity of scripture and the infallible word of God are also now being convinced. Yes, sir. Amen? Yeah. Nowadays, we hear phrases such as, oh, well, well, brother, you know, the Bible and the gospel, you know, they, they, they transform as time changes. They follow society. Once right. society changes, the gospel has to go with it also. You know, if, if, if these are norms that were given to people 2,000 years ago or over 2,000 years ago, and so as time changes, as societies progress, but these ideas also have to be filtered through the lens of society. Amen. And let me tell you, that's a lie from the devil. Yes. Amen. That's a lie from hell. Amen. The Bible does not change. The gospel doesn't change. Amen. Hallelujah. And anybody that says that is a false teacher and should be called out on it. Amen. And we should flee from those people. Yes, if we hear things such as, oh, brother, we, we got to be tolerant. Amen. We got to, we got to, are they, they're doing this in church? No problem. Just, God doesn't care. That he cares about the heart of a person. Yeah. And then we hear things such as, oh, you can't you can't speak about this. You can't speak about this because it's too hard on the people. You know, you, you can't speak about this because they might get their feelings hurt. Right. You can't speak about this because it's just it's too hard on the people. You know, they already got enough worries to worry about. That you know, they've had a hard day at work, they've had a hard day at the house, and they're not gonna come here just for us to preach to them more hard work. Let's just soothe it up for them. Let's just soothe it up for them. Let's make it a likable word. Let's make it. Simple. Matter of fact, let's ask them, what, what do y'all like? What do y'all want us to preach to you about? Right. Amen. Nothing hard. No, no, never that. Amen. That's why you hear people. That's why you hear preachers now saying, well, well, yeah. hey, preacher, why don't you speak about sin? Oh, because, you know, that, I'll let God take care of that. Mm -hmm. I'll let, if God convicts them in their heart, I'll let them take care of that. But I don't, I don't want to uh, be a burden on them. I don't want to, you know, they have enough going on outside. I don't want them to come in here. And then I'm going to start talking about the sin of the world and how they need to repent. No, 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 no. I'll talk to them about how God has a plan for their lives and how he wishes us prosperity in this life. And how, uh, you know, what's important is just being positive about everything. Amen. But there is never a message about the sinfulness of men and the need Amen. For a man to come before God and bring those sins upon God. Right. And the fact that God will, in fact, amen, forgive. Right. Forgive your repenting heart. Amen. Yes. We hear things like, oh, this is antiquated. You know, this is yeah. this is from back back when. 
This is from a long time ago. Amen. This is stuff that was relevant then. It's not as relevant now. We can just kind of take you know, yeah. the essence of it. We can take the All idea right. of it. And we can just kind of mold it into you know, what we can understand from it now. We can mold it into what society is nowadays. And that's why we see things such as, oh, uh, homosexuality is not bad. You know, it was, bad, it was bad You know, back then because it was, it was kind of taboo. You know, it was kind of generally accepted. But now... I mean, you know, times change, society's change, and, you know, people are going to love who they want to love, yeah. and that is also a lie from hell, and I, I can't That's leave nice. that open yeah. without saying that that is not true. Amen. Yeah. Just as the Bible condemned it back then, yes. it condemns it now. Amen. Yes. That's, That's right. What they, you know, homosexuality and things like that, people yeah. say that, you know, that transitions, you know, what's the problem then? It's not a problem now. Uh, being, being, you know, having a love for money, the Bible says it, you know, it's probably a problem then right now. I mean, Hey, if you love money, you love money. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Amen. And that's a lie from hell also. Yes, sir. Yes. I've heard people, you know, I've heard people go as far as to say, it, and this, I'm speaking of it, you know, I'm speaking of verbatim. I saw it. I heard it. I mean, I saw this said. I saw somebody, you know, a self-proclaimed Christian say, you know, God gives us the freedom to choose, right? God gives us the freedom to choose our paths. And, I'm, you know, yes, he does. So, so if he gives us our, our, our freedom to choose, then... God is pro-choice. Look out. No, sir. God is pro-choice. If he gives us the freedom to choose, then God must be pro-choice. And, and it's, it's so simple to understand. But, but you know, legalist Christians, they, they just don't understand that. And I replied to this person. I was like, that is not what that means. No. That is not what that no. means. Amen. Yes, God gives you the freedom to choose. That's, that's the beauty of it. Amen. That when we come to God, we come knowing that we, I mean, we have we have two choices before us. Yes, the Bible says that you know choose you know I present to you before you life or death. You know you yeah. can choose, yeah. but I urge you to choose life. Amen. Yeah. And so the, the the beauty of it is that we choose. You know we choose to follow Him. Right. Amen. How how right. weird and how how unspecial would it be if we were just like robots that we were forced to follow God? We're not. Amen. Yeah. We're not forced to follow God, but the, the beauty and love that is like that. I mean, just like he loved us unconditionally, that we right. turn right around and we just love Jesus back. Amen. That's beautiful. And I told yeah. this person, I was like, that's not what that means. Yes, God gives you the freedom to choose. But guess what? Those choices that you make, they're going to carry consequences. Right. And if you choose to have philosophies, if you, if you choose to have ideas that contradict the will of God, there's going to be, you know, Bad stuff in store for you. Right. And this person told me, oh, I mean, it's just so simple to understand. You just choose not to understand it. So just whatever. Keep your idea if you want. And it grieves me to, to think that people think this way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To think that people read the Bible and, and come up with ideas like God is pro choice. Come up with ideas like God excuses homosexuality. Amen. Come up with ideas like, I mean, holiness, that's, I mean, you know, God cares about what's inside. Amen. It, yeah. it grieves me that people think this way. Amen. And it's not just in society. It's not just in church. We see, and we probably saw this, you know, way more than we've ever seen it before, in the political cycle of 2020. Right. That there's people telling you what to believe. Right. Amen. There's people, you might be convinced of something. You might be convinced of, you know what, this, you know, this is good for this country. Uh, this policy would be good for this country. You know, this president is doing good for this country. And there's people... Left and right, trying to tell you, oh no, that's not true. This would be better, or the, that's not true. If you if you think this way, you're a racist. If you think this way, you're a sexist. If you think this way, you're a misogynist. Yeah. If you think this way, you're this, 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 and this. And they put so many labels on that people that were once convinced of their convictions, convinced of what they believed, begin to think, well, you know what? Am I? I mean. I don't want to be racist, and I believe nobody wants to be racist. Amen. So people begin to think, well. I guess I guess I can you know change the way I think. Yeah. I guess I can accept these. I guess I can I can start to accept this, this, and this. I guess I can start sliding to the left in the political spectrum. Amen. And we see that whether it's in society, whether it's in church, whether it's in the political cycle, amen. People are always trying to draw us out of our convictions, and they're trying to they're trying to convince us and persuade us of things that are just not true, that are not so, and that are definitely not godly. Amen. And the tragic thing is that if we're not convinced, if we're not amen persuaded in what we believe, in this case, the most important thing, if we're not persuaded in Scripture, if we're not persuaded in the Bible, right. those yes, things will knock us down. If we're not persuaded in what scripture says is right and is wrong, we will fall for anything. 
that comes against us. Yeah. And then we will begin, amen, to compromise in our beliefs. The world wants us to believe that the word of God changes. Yeah. The word wants us to believe that we must adapt the word of God to our times and our society, amen? But but we got to remember, amen, when these come against us, when these arguments come up, we got to remember that we serve God that two yeah. things. One, he does not make mistakes, amen? Right. The Bible says that God does not make mistakes. He does not apologize. He has nothing to apologize for because he's amen. perfect. He's infallible, amen? Right. He's all-knowing. He's all-seeing, and he had it all planned out from the beginning of the foundation of the world. But second, the Bible says that God is the same yesterday as he is yeah. today. And as you will be tomorrow, right? right? So I can rest assured that the same God, amen, that spoke to Abraham, that spoke to Moses, that spoke to Paul himself, amen, is the same God that speaks to us today. Yeah. Amen. The same God that told Paul, this is right, this is wrong, the same God that sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us is the same God that we preach today. Yes, amen. Sir. And his ideas do not change. That's his word right. does not change. Thank amen. The Bible says that the earth and the heavens may pass away, but the word of God, it stands firm regardless yeah, of the time. Regardless yes, of when somebody reads it, amen, it stands Hallelujah. firm on what is right, what is wrong, and what is the way to get to heaven. Amen. 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 Good preaching. Hallelujah. So, if the Bible doesn't change, then what needs to change? We do. Yeah, that's it. Yes. If the Bible doesn't change, then what <laughs> needs to change? I guess we can all agree that the world is not perfect. Uh -huh. We can all agree that the world is not a utopia. Right. It's not the best that it can be. Amen? And I would say that probably 100% of the reason is because of the depravity of man. And so if the Bible does not need to be filtered, you know, through the filter of society, then I'm convinced that it's backwards. Society needs to be filtered. Yes. 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 Amen? Yes. Amen? Yes. Society, yes. people, yes. our hearts, they need to be they need to be, you know, filtered through what Scripture right. says. And when you take a heart that's made of stone, when you take a heart that's dirty, when you take a heart that is stained with sin, that's stained with oh. evil desires, and you filter it through, through Scripture, the Bible says that He gives us a new heart. Amen? Yes. He gives us a heart that is clean, that is pure. Amen. He gives us a heart that loves God and right. loves our neighbor, that loves yes, our sir. brother. Amen? And with it follows everything else. Why? Because if I love my brother, I'm not going to want to kill him. I'm not going to want to steal from him. I'm not going to want to take his life. I'm not going to covet what he has. Right. And if I love yes, God, I'm going to follow every commandment that I hear, in, that I see Hallelujah. here in Scripture. Amen. Knowing that one day I'm going to see him face to face, and I'm going to have to answer for what I did through all that. Amen. The Bible doesn't have to be filtered through society. We have to be filtered. Through the Bible. Amen. That's right. So my question is, are you persuaded or are you persuadable? Are you persuaded in what you believe in the gospel, in the word of God, or are you persuadable? Amen. If somebody comes knocking on your door and starts preaching a new gospel, might you come to the conclusion and say, well, I mean, this, this might be true. This might sound right. Maybe everything that I've known for, for my whole life, or if you're a you know, relatively new believer, uh, everything that I thought I knew, uh, it, it might be wrong, so I'm going to follow them instead. No. Amen? Are you convinced or are you convincible? Are you persuaded or are you persuadable? Amen? And now you might ask yourself, well, how do we, how do we tell what's true or nothing? It, you know, there's, there's preachers. The Bible says that, you know, he has preachers with the purpose of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, of preaching the way to heaven. Amen? So how do we tell what's right and what is wrong? Amen. So I'm going to bring a contrast from the people of Lystra. And I'm going to ask Brother Jordan, uh, Brother Andrew, if he can read Acts 17, verse 10 to 15. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, and coming thither went into the synagogues of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalon Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and started the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea. But Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that 
that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving a commandment to Silas and Timotheus, far to come to for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Amen. We see that Paul came and preached to the people in Berea. Amen. Is that how you pronounce it? Amen. Yes. Amen. He he came to preach also. Amen. As what his was his work going around preaching to different cities and trying to trying to enlighten them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he came to Berea and preached to them. And he found in the Bereans an audience that, like the people in Lystra, they saw, they heard, and they accepted the gospel yes. that he was preaching. They saw and they heard. Now it doesn't specify if he did any miracles. It doesn't specify if he just spoke in you know in front of thousands of people. It doesn't specify how it was that he did it. It just says that he came and he you know he began to preach in the synagogues. Yes. He began to preach the gospel. And the people of Berea, they accepted it. Amen. But there was a difference in the reaction of the people from Berea than the ones from Lystra. And the difference was that after they heard the word, after they heard what Paul had to say, after they heard the preaching of the gospel, amen, after they heard the preaching that Paul came to them with, they went home, they went to the scriptures, and they began to read the Bible and saying, okay, I remember what Paul said, let me go in the scripture and see if this is true. Yes. Let me go in the scripture and see if what he's saying is true. Let me go in the scripture and make yes. sure that he's not coming just to try to make money off of us or just, you know, to try to convince us of something that isn't so. Let me That's check right. in the scriptures what it has to say about what Paul, what Paul is uh, preaching us. Amen? Wow. And so that was the difference. The people of this they, just, they took whatever he had to say. And even though he had the truth, when something that wasn't the truth, when a, when a lie came through, Trying to sweep away everything that Paul had done since they didn't get into the Word, since they didn't get into the Scriptures and didn't analyze it. They said, hey, this sounds right. I'm just going to go on and go right along and you know, follow this, what they're telling me instead. Amen? So the difference was that they saw into the Scriptures to ensure that what Paul was telling them was accurate. Amen? So we, we began to see that, you know, brothers started springing up in Berea. They started believing. They started being convinced, being persuaded of what Paul had to say. And once again, the Jews, when they heard this, they said, oh no, we're stopping it just like we did in Lystra. We're doing it again. We're going to go in there. We're going to tear down what Paul is saying. We're going to reinstitute what we have to say. And it's going to be a victory again. It's going to be a piece of cake. Look, Amen? Yeah. But the Bible says that when the Jews came this time, when the Jews came this time and they said Paul's going to get stoned again, if he didn't die the first time, he's going to die this time right. for sure. The Bible says that the Bereans heard what was happening. They heard that the Jews were coming and they said, hey, Paul, let's get you out of here. Save it. Let's go ahead and let's go. We know you preached to us the truth. Yeah. We searched it up for ourselves. Yeah. Right. We know you have the word of God, so let's get you, let's get you out to see. And if, if, if it's time for you to come back after they leave, okay, but if not and God sends you elsewhere, then let that be it. Yes, Amen. Sir. So when the Jews came to try to spread, you know, another upheaval, to try to spread another revolt, to try to once again undermine everything that Paul said, the Bereans said, no, we know what's true. We know that what you have to say is not true. Paul, let's get you out of here. We're not going to let these men get a hold of you. And you're going to continue preaching the gospel of yes, Jesus sir. Christ. Amen. Amen. There was such a big difference from the reaction of the Bereans to the reaction of the people from Lystra. Right. And, and you might ask yourself, what was the difference? What was the difference? How do we know, amen, what word is, is, is good without being deceived? How do we know what word is good without being conned, without being, amen, led astray? Even today, how do we how do we know what is true and what isn't when it's preached to us? And the answer is simple, amen. It's the Bible. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah, like yeah, right. Right. Did. Amen. When somebody preaches us something, yes. We look through the Bible. Amen. Amen. We start yes, through the Bible. And if it lines up with Scripture, then that's good. If it does not like the line up with Scripture, if it contradicts Scripture, amen, then let that be of the enemy. Let not let that not be from God. Amen. Right. And yes, we just take right. that word and we throw it away because if it does not follow with Scripture, then that word is no good. The Bible yes, says, yes, amen, that even if an angel from heaven comes down right. and preaches us a new gospel, let that be an act. Right. Let that be anathema. Yes, Why? Sir. Because yes. anything that contradicts what God has to say in His Word that does not change and does not grow old is not from God. Yes, and then the enemy, the enemy can cloak himself. 
even as an angel of God. Amen. There might be preachers that you think, whoa, this, this, this preacher, you know, he's eloquent. This, this preacher has a good voice. This preacher, uh, he always brings me to tears. He always has good anecdotes. He always has, uh, you know, there's just, I don't know, there's something about him that just kind of draws me into the church. Amen. But once you start seeing what he's preaching and you realize that it does not line up with scripture, yeah. amen, there's a, there's a decision to make. Yeah. Am I going to stay here and just be convinced? Am I going to stay here and, and compromise on what the Bible says and just pretty much at that point be following man rather than God? Right. Or am I going to take a stand yeah. and say, I will not be reconvinced, I will not be, amen, persuadable because I'm persuaded in what the word of yeah. God says amen. despite of what man has to say. Amen. The Bereans filtered everything they heard through the Bible. Yes. And that's how they were able to know and be convinced and be persuaded without being moved amen. of what the truth was. Yeah. Just to wrap up, amen. To conclude, <clears throat> I love history. Amen. Some of you guys know that. Yes. I love history. You know, I consider myself a, uh, I don't know if you call it a student of history, but I just love studying history. Amen. We study the Bible, we study history. It's just, right. uh, it's interesting just to know the experiences that people have gone through, the things that have happened. And if you've heard that term, history will repeat itself, yes. and if, if unavoided. We can learn a lot from history. And so on the way to uh, on the way to church earlier, uh, I was listening to a podcast, and I was listening to the court case, the Supreme Court case, uh, Roe versus Wade. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. And I was interested to listening because I mean I knew what it was about, I knew what decision came out of it, but I really didn't know the arguments that were made within the case. And so I was interested to see you know hearing more about it, and. Honestly, it grieved my heart also when I finished hearing this podcast and see what the conclusion was. But within it, there was a plaintiff, Roe, and there was the uh, defendant, Wade, amen. The, I believe it was the Dallas, uh, I can't think of it, but it was here in Dallas, amen. And so once that case went up to the Supreme Court, the arguments were, you know, and, and I might not be 100% you know, thorough, but the big idea of it is that. Roe, who was uh, arguing pro-abortion, he was arguing that uh, women should be given the right to abort, amen, to pretty much kill their unborn, unborn child. Uh, the argument on her case was that the right to privacy, amen, the right to privacy and the rights that weren't uh, specifically mentioned in the Constitution trump a fetus's right to life, amen. And Wade's argument, you know, the opposite, was that the fetus's right to life trumps the right to privacy and that a fetus is an individual with his own rights. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So after deliberation, after the arguments were made, after the judges, you know, they convened and they began to speak and they came up with a decision, they, come with, they came up with an opinion, the court sided with Roe and they decided that the rights to privacy trumped a fetus is right to life. Amen. And they decided that there was no scientific evidence that a fetus was an individual, that he was not fully developed, and therefore did not need or did not have the rights to life as an individual would have it. Amen. At the time, the people that were opposed to that decision, even after it was made, the people that began to campaign and began to rise, you know, lift up committees, began to lift up, lift up, um, you know, action committees. To try to fight that decision, to try to, you know, uh, gather a national movement that would go against that were the evangelical Christians. Okay. And even, even Christians of, of other uh, so-called denominations, you know, even Catholics were against this. And we know that Catholics, they do not hold the truth, but they were against this. Right. Amen. But evangelical Christians, they were not having it. They, they began to uh, make movements. They began to create movements, actions. They tried whatever they could do. To try to reverse this decision, amen, because they knew and they were convinced right. that biblically that is not acceptable. Right. Amen. It wasn't acceptable then. It's not acceptable now. There's a life there. There's a life to stay. That life, amen, has life. Amen. And it has the right to life. It has the right to liberty and the pursuit of happiness, just like any one of us do. Amen. And the ones that were largely opposed to that idea were, you know, progressives, the ones that were seeking changes, amen, activists. Right. 
the sad part is that nowadays, that was back in the, I don't know, 60s, I don't remember exactly. Nowadays, we see more and more Christians, people in the church, that are saying, hey, that's no problem. We see more and more people, self-proclaimed right. self -proclaimed Christians, self-proclaimed Christians that they say they have been changed, they have been renewed by the word, right. say, abortion, that's not a problem. Pro-choice, hey, that's not a problem. Look at her. Hey, that, you know, that's that's too hard for the people. If women want to make their own decisions, let them. Hey, you know, as long as people accept Jesus, whatever they want to do with their body, no problem. Mm -hmm. Amen. The sad part is that as back then, it was evangelicals mm -hmm. that were against that. Now it's the evangelicals that are greatly pushing for it. Look out. That are saying it's okay. Cool. There's no problem. We live in a world, amen, in which the foundations of the gospel, they're being eroded in waves. They're being destroyed. They're being attacked. They're being harassed, amen, by waves of progressivism. They're being, you know, eroded by waves of acceptance and even the false pretense of loving somebody. Right. Amen. Right. Telling them, oh, let them be in church. Don't call out their sin because, you know, what would Jesus do? He would love them just like they are. Amen. And that's not true. The Bible says that when there was sin in somebody's life, Jesus came to them and he would heal them and they would say, hey, you know, I forgive you of your sins. But even with that woman, he said, go and sin no more. Yeah. Go and sin no more. Go and change your ways. I have forgiven you, but do not stay in that same lifestyle. Amen. Right. So churches are now trying to preach. They're trying to preach it backwards. Hey, if God, changed, if God saved you, you can stay just like you are. Amen. But there's fruit when somebody is saved, amen? Nowadays, churches are being told, you can't preach about sin. Churches mm -hmm. are being told, you, can, you accept anybody as they come, amen? Accept anybody as they come. But just like society changes, just as society changes, the Bible doesn't change, right. amen? Men is what has to change. Yes. Men and our hearts are what has to change, amen? Many yeah. denominations have sprung up not based on scripture. If everybody went off of scripture, there would be no denominations. Right. If everybody went off of scripture, there wouldn't even be different religions. Right. If everybody went off of scripture, there would just be followers of Christ. Right. And then, but denominations spring up. Why? Because of the desires of men. Right. Because of differences in opinion. Because somebody thinks something's right and somebody thinks another. We don't agree. Oh, no problem. You open up your own church, I'll open up mine, and we'll just agree to disagree. And that's why denominations spring up. And if everybody went by the word of God, well, by, by what the Bible says, there wouldn't be churches. There would just be followers of Christ. I mean, let me rephrase that. There wouldn't be denominations. There would just be a church united that follows God. That's Amen. Right. Now, just as in Paul's time, he was denounced. Now the men of God are being denounced as legalists. Uh -huh. Now the people that preach the true, you know, old school gospel, the gospel that does not change, the gospel that the you know apostles preached, they're being called legalists. Right. They're being called too harsh. They're being called cult leaders in some cases. Right. They're being called, amen, people that they just don't have mercy and they don't have love for others. Amen. And the funny thing is that the people that are usually calling them that is preachers in sheep's clothing. Right. And then preachers right. that don't mean the good, you know, good for the people, just good for their pockets. Good for their stomachs, amen. Good for their hearts, good for their minds. But they do not mean, amen, what's to, to, to do and to preach what's good and what's right in front of the eyes of the Lord. Amen. So my question is, again, are you persuaded or are you persuadable? Are you firm in what you believe, amen? Are you, are you firm that the scriptures are the infallible word of God? Amen. Or are you still trying to, you know, figure out what's right and what's not, amen? If we know the truth, if we are convinced, and if we are persuaded, then we are to stand on that truth. Yes, we are sir. to stand on that rock that does not move, yes, amen? Yes, Even yes, if the yes, winds of society, you know, go from one way to another, right. if we're standing on that rock, on that firm bedrock, amen, we will stand firm. We will yes, not fall, yes, amen? Yes. And just like if we know we have the truth, there's no need to go around looking for it. Yes, there's no sir. need to go around looking for it and figuring out, oh, you know, is, is this religion, or is this set correct, or is this one right, or is this one right? Now, I'm not saying there's a problem with studying in about, you know, other sects, especially, and I would say really the only reason is if you want to have a defense against them. I like to do that, you know, sometimes. I like to study what other people believe so that when they come to me, I can, I know how to defend myself, right? right. I know how to defend our faith. Amen. But other than that, 
If you know that you have found the truth, there's no need, there's no reason, there's no need to go around looking for alternatives. Right. Amen. Right. Because one of the one of the you know hallmark definitions of the truth is that there's just one. Yeah. Amen. There's no such a thing as you have your truth, I have my truth. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's just one truth. Amen. And that is Jesus Christ, and that He is the way to heaven. Amen. Right. If you are, if you're still looking for the truth, if you're still looking around, Amen. It means that either, it means that pretty much you haven't found it. Right. If you're still looking for the truth, it means you are not convinced that yes, you have found it. Amen. Amen. And if you feel that way right now tonight, then I would just urge you to come before God in the altar. Amen. And to pray to Him. And don't go off of what people tell you. Don't go off of you know what the people on the corner or at the gas station tell you. If you seek God, amen, the Bible says, seek me, and you will find me, oh, yes, amen, yes, and God right. will reveal himself if you just look through the scripture, and you pray to him, that's all that you need, amen, along with the good and anointed preacher that preaches the Bible, that is what will help you, amen, find right. the truth, amen, amen. hallelujah, if we're not founded in the truth, we'll be swept by the tide of worldliness that is grabbing out of us. Amen. We know the truth. I believe every one of us here knows the truth. Amen. And once again, if not, tonight's the night in which we need to be persuaded. Because if we're not persuaded, we won't be persuadable. And just to wrap it up, the Bible says, amen, that we should be knowledgeable about Scripture. The Bible says that we should be knowledgeable, and not only knowledgeable, but ready to provide defense of our faith. Amen. If we can't do that, we need to get on that word. We need to get yeah. on that prayer. And we need to be convinced and know that Jesus Christ is God. Amen. And that there's only one pathway to heaven. Yes. And we're on it right now. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, Brother Daniel. I believe Brother Daniel did the best he knew how to do, don't you? Yes. Amen. I've got to make a little disclaimer here. You know, there's a disclaimer on the sides of the cigarettes. Uh, there's a disclaimer on a lot of things. And my disclaimer is, thank God for truth. Yes. Thank God for the preaching of the truth and the Bible. And we've got a foundation that we can build upon. Yes. Amen? Amen? The Bible says what's done in secret is going to be revealed in the light. Amen? Amen? Amen. And I just love the Lord. I appreciate what he's preached tonight. I... Uh, uh, I don't know if you've heard about the Berean Holiness uh, group that's going around, but they're they're gaining our youth, yeah. and they're out of the pit of hell. Yes, sir. They're searching for something that's better than holiness, and holiness in truth and holiness in revival is what God brought to the church. Amen. That's how He established the church. But uh, just because people, uh, you know found a better way and they're coming with that's not required anymore just like brother Daniel says beware of it yes. uh, there is still the letter and there is the spirit right. and a man's heart is going to determine what he believes yes, amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. amen we're going to believe truth if we've got a heart that hungers for truth yeah. but if we are not hungry for the truth we're going to be swept away with the sea of lies yeah we're either going to be building on the, 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 the sand or building on the rock. Right. And Jesus is the rock. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do, let's do like Brother Daniel suggested. I wanted to uh, come and say that. I thank God.